Patriots and Falcons. Falcons catching six and a half at home. 47 is the over under. I have to pass on this because I'm going to pick it wrong. If you're going to wait for the wrong pick, you'll have to uh, tune in to Fox Thursday Night Football, the pregame show where I am on a torrid streak. Torrid or horrid? Four in a row I've lost after winning 11 in a row. So I will pass. I'll let you guys uh, digest this one. I will say it's very strange in that, I mean, what did the Patriots win by? The Patriots won by uh, like 33 points and the Falcons lost by 40. And now this is the next one. This is a crazy to be going into this Thursday game, but we'll see. We'll see which way I go. Six and a half went down from seven on Fandle. 47 is the over under. Uh, Paul, kids start us off. I know you're the world's biggest Patriots fan. Go ahead. Yeah, Sal. Um, Look, I I know I I can't imagine which way you're going to go because the Falcons have done nothing but burn us year after year after year. Uh, they burned me last week when I jumped on them to cover against the Cowboys. Maybe a little bit of an emotional hedge for me at that time because I didn't want to suffer. But Sal, we have a Falcons team that got beat up. Not that they, they look. Sometimes these teams rebound after a tough loss. The Falcons got physically beat up by the Cowboys the other day. They might be missing uh, pretty much their best offensive player so far this year. And Patterson could be out. And if he plays, he's going to be limited. Uh, Mike Davis is not who they thought he was when they were getting him. Hence the reason why Patterson, a receiver, has been playing running back. Um, This Patriots defense has been playing phenomenal football. Mac Jones has been efficient. Belichick. What coach can prepare a team better on like three days than Belichick? Nobody, uh, especially the Falcons coaches, are going to be have his guys prepared as the Patriots. The Patriots will, have been probably preparing for the Falcons for two weeks, uh, right. I'm sure, at this point already. The Patriots are the better team. They're playing great football. Falcons are just too beat up right now. I don't think they can recover after that uh, Cowboys loss. Patriots are flying right now. They're going to cover this, Sal. They're going to cover this spread. Falcons are going to have a tough time scoring against them. Patriots will put up points. Patriots cover the six and a half. I'm going to say parlay kid over on their 16 and a half money line parlays that you have the Patriots on the front end. <laughs> or two team me teasers. I mean, two team teaser, money line parlay. Yeah, yes. I mean, now that's under seven, you can get it right just to win, basically. Yeah. Right. Exactly, Sal. Uh, yeah, there's nothing to not like about the Pats to me this week. Especially, look, go, we're going to go with the team that has won me money over the years or the team that has lost me money over the years. (laughs) I'm going with the team that always wins the Patriots. They're playing some of the best football in the league. I got to say, regardless of what I pick on Thursday, I feel bad for them. They, they approach me Fox like, Oh, you're going to do something on 28, three on the team that, you know, blowing the 28, three. I'm like, nah, I've had enough of it. I really have. I I don't know. I don't know that they come back from it. I don't know if they ever come back from it, but um, yeah, that's um, pretty well mine. And, and, and you know, Sal, I, I'm a revenge guy game. A guy, yeah. a revenge game guy. So is Ben uh, Kelly, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but I don't see it here. I just don't, I don't know if there's a, how many Falcons are still left from that team or playing right now where it even, you know, means anything to them that, that loss. All right. All right, Harry, you are going over the point total. You worried about like a backdoor cover or something here, but you think the Pats are going to score a lot? Yeah, I'm going to take uh, the Pats over 27 and a half points for the game at minus 106. Atlanta is 34, 31st in points allowed this season. They have in defense, they have just three picks and put mostly no pressure on quarterbacks. Uh, they are dead last in sacks in the NFL, which if you give time for Mac Jones to find receivers, he's been fantastic in his rookie season doing so and the Pats Bill Belichick's team. Nobody's been better really on offense lately. Last five weeks, New England averaging 36 points per game. And like I said, Atlanta's defense, very soft in many games this season, give up big points, big yards, Pats over 27 and a half. Brian, don't we have to see what Belichick's wearing? If it's the octogenarian onesie or what, what he's got going on now, he wore a nice shiny jacket to a press conference. He might be losing his mind uh, in a way we, we have never seen before, but you're not taking the game aside. You're taking the total. I'm taking the total. Although didn't you give us this, you gave us a really good stat last week, right? The teams that didn't cover right versus right. the teams that did cover in the week before you gave us that stat last week. And I think it went four and oh, four and oh. Did it weekend, again? Really? Over wow. the week, yeah. over last weekend. So yeah. this would 
this would fit in right to take the Falcons oh, here. Oh man! But, mm-hmm. but I, I, but uh, like Parley Kid was saying, I don't trust the Falcons here, especially against the Pats defense. You know, they're averaging 19 points per game at home, 14 points per game in their last three. And I think on a you know on a short week, I think the Patriots run the ball here. Uh, the Falcons haven't been good against the run. I think the clock keeps moving. Also, just one th- thing to point out, on, in these Thursday night games, it's gone under in seven of the last eight. So mm-hmm. uh, give me the under here of 47. Okay, hard to believe Matt Ryan was Offensive Player of the Year two weeks ago, right? Not not like five. That was, that was a couple. That was against the Saints. Was that a win? Well, that, against Saints? well yeah, yeah. Well, that was the Saints. You know, that was the Saints win. But also, don't forget, that game was, was about to go way under, right? There was all right. those points, too, scored scored late in that game too. All right. So I could join the party here with props. We each pick props. Uh, Russell Gage. I had high hopes for him in the beginning of the year. I really did. I thought Pitts would open things up for him and he's been on again, off again. Uh, Now with Ridley out, he's a bigger part of the offense, although he had zero last week. I don't know what you do with last week's game against the Cowboys. They just, I feel like they had no offensive plays because if you look at their numbers, it just doesn't even make sense that they ever had the ball, but I'm going over 39 and a half receiving yards. Minus 114, a little spark in Russell Gage's game. Had a scrap with Jordan Lewis, Cowboys D back towards the end. Um, Like I said, put up a zero last week, but 64 and 67 yards before last week. He's averaged six targets per week for those previous two weeks. Receivers, he mentioned how big, big, uh, not not a press conference, but he did an interview, talked about how the receivers are going to help each other out. I don't know. Starting to run his mouth, and I, I believe it. I'm going to back him up here. I like over 39 and a half yards. I think he gets in the 50 range. Russell Gage over. Uh, Harry, tell me what you think you like a receiver going over also. Yeah, I like Kendrick Bourne at minus 114, over 35 and a half receiving yards for the Pats. Uh, Monday, I killed it with my Monday night prop. Uh, Mitchell over 14 and a half rushes. He had 27, 27. So hopefully I can get it again here. Bourne has been a tremendous free agent pickup. Uh, for the Pats, leads them in receiving yards. He's averaging 52 a game. Uh, it's three and one this year, going for 58 yards or more versus NFC teams, and had a se- season high 98 last week versus the Browns in their blowout. So, born over one, over 35, over and one. receiving yards at minus 114. All right, over 35 and a half. Uh, Parley kid, well, if you like the game, you like a lot of scoring, you like the Patriots to cover, but Matty Ice to go. Two well, touchdown passes or more. You know I'm a sucker for this prop. And Matty Ice, and, and this is where, look, I am, I'm going to be furious about this at the end of the game. I'm almost doing this for some comic relief here for myself because uh, I I can't lose with this. If I lose, I'm going to be laughing all night about it. So right. one over one and a half touchdown passes at plus 124 for Matty Ice. Anytime I see this number, uh, over one and a half, and there's a plus next to it. I'm a sucker for it. Matty Ice, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's gone over one and a half in six out of his last eight games. If you take away that Cowboy game, he had gone over six out of the previous seven. Uh, he's still a pro. He still look. They get. They're gonna score some points. I think he puts up a cheap one late to go over here, Sal. I just like the value of plus one twenty four. I think they're gonna find. Some tough going, running the ball, especially if Patterson's out. I think they're going to have to take to the air. They'll, he'll manage to get one or two. He'll rebound. He threw zero last week. When was the last time Ryan went back-to-back games without a touchdown pass? Yeah. I, mean, I know he needs two, this but I'm bet. betting on it. This, this bet. This one? This bet. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. And I'll, I will be hysterical laughing. If it, well, if you know what's going to be funny? You and your brother are going to battle it out. He's going to have one. He's going to be driving at the end of the game, whether the drive matters or not. And he's either going to throw a pick or a touchdown. And then one of you will there win go. or lose because Bry, brother Bry, has Matty Ice yeah. to throw an interception. I have, I have throwing an interception. Look, it's minus 158. It's not great value here. But the Patriots, you know, they have nine interceptions in the last five games. That's including picks against Dak and then two against Herbert. Um, Ryan has thrown five interceptions in the last four games. I, you know, I just expect them to be hot, be behind in this game, having to make a play. And I can easily see, you know, if they had multiple interceptions or, you know, uh, minus one and a half here, I would look at the over on that too. You know, I could definitely see him throwing two picks in this game. Uh, and, 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 you know, any bet I will say, um, I know Parley kids supporting him here, but any bet against Ryan is a really fun one. Like, I, I feel like you yeah, have the whole, 
you have the whole game to root against him. This whole game for an for one interception. That's true. I mean, just give me one. Although just he could me. get hurt on the first drive, and then you're well, both screwed. <laughs> both of you lose out. True. Uh, I have lo- I have lost. Then I'll lose too uh, with this Gage. Inter- this interception prop bet because of that before. Yeah. So. All right. All right, first touchdown. We laid this out Monday. I don't know if you heard, but we're up like something like 61 units or something on the year, Brother Bry, right? If you bet all four of our first touchdown picks over the first 10 weeks, that's like 80 bets. I know you're betting a lot, but we win basically once a week, which, you know, 10 to 1, 39 to 1, 16 to 1, 21 to 1. It adds up to a positive of 61 units as we have it. You're not going to love mine. I like Mike Davis at 10 to one. I, it's going to be tough to make a compelling case because he only has one touchdown. Mm-hmm. But right. as the parlay kid mentioned, Cordell Patterson, a game time decision. It's going to be limited. Even if he plays, they probably won't play him. Listen to Jen Piacenti. You know, Piacenti says basically going to be a, a miracle, especially on three days rest. Uh, Davis splitting time with Gallman, but I think he's going to get double digit touches and by the goal line. And anytime you have your lead running back for either team at 10 to one, or worse, uh, I think you got to go with it. There we go. 10-1, to 1, not bad. Mike Davis sneaks one in from the two-yard line, and the Falcons lead 10 nothing. Whoop, did I say that? With three minutes left in the first quarter. Uh, <laughs> Harry, what are you saying? I'm going to take Hunter Henry at 10-1. to 1. Uh, Mac Jones has 13 touchdowns this year, eight of them to tight end, seven of them to Henry through 10 games. The most touchdowns of Henry's career since his rookie season of eight, and like I said, only through 10 games, has scored six touchdowns in his last seven games had two touchdowns last week and has had the first touchdown in Patriots games twice this year. So at 10 to one, give me Hunter Henry. All right. And he makes some spectacular catches too. I mean, he's in it to win it with the, with these Mac Jones throws. All right. Uh, brother Brian, what do you like? I do like both of Harry's picks today. I like the born one. I like the Henry. Oh, no, um, come on. I, I kind of do. I'm not going to lie. I was actually going to like my was, Mitchell one too, Brian. Was, you you was, like my Mitchell one. Don't get greedy. Uh, I was actually going to give both of those. And then I looked and I said, fuck shit. And Harry's got both of them. <laughs> um, but this one's tough to me. There are about like 12 different uh, New England running backs who could score uh, in this game. Also with the Falcons, there's like multiple different options. There's like a lot of guys like uh, uh, questionable here. So I'm actually going to go. I'm going to go with the former Raider here. Nelson Aguilar, 12 to one. Um, there's a, there's just as good of a chance that he drops a touchdown pass. I mean, that, that should be a, what that, do you get for that? You that don't get good should, odds that on that. That should you? be a prop. That should be a prop. <laughs> uh, but he still managed to be, uh, to be targeted five times a game. I think he, he and Bourne are comparable. Um, yeah. I'm just feeling a little bit of a former Raiders touchdown here. Um, and uh, right. I, I like, you know, you get, I mean, Bourne is 11 to 1, Aguilar is 12 to 1. So I, I'll, I'll take the better odds here on this. By the way, Parlick, and I'm looking at these now. These have to be the worst names after I really so I praised us for get Mike Davis, Nelson Aguilar, Hunter Henry. And you're going, you're going with Bolden. Well, I, you know, I was, I was going to go with Bolden. Um, and now I might have to change because, I mean, he was 13 to 1 this afternoon. He's 30 to 1 now. So I'm checking really? to see what's up. And he's got a little bit of a hip injury. So who knows if he's even playing tomorrow. Right. right. So that really screws things up. So let's, <laughs> I can't, I, I can't take Bolden. I, I don't know. 30 to one's great odds because Bolden's kind of taken over that James White role, not really running the ball too much, but really catching the ball out of the backfield uh, for them. It looks like Harris is probably going to be back as well. So I don't know. Right, listen, further. the people are depending on us here, Parley kid. I just well, gave I know. out, you know, and these odds, these odds <laughs> for these guys, like, like you mentioned this last week and I know somebody called us out on it with, because, but, because we have been winning, but at the same time, like Jacoby Myers has the third best odds of right. this group. He scored his first touchdown of his career last week. Uh, if you talk to right. Patriots fans, he's never going to not score again. I mean, that was right. it. He just had to get the one. That, and was, that was it. it. Right. That's yeah. it. But I'm saying he's got, He's plus 850 here, and right. he scored one touchdown his whole career. <laughs> he, he should be like 30 to 1 or something to score again. But yeah. that being said, so let's take Stevenson. Scratch Stevenson plus 750. All right. I, he, I don't know where the Patriots keep finding these running backs. They just plug and play. It's, it's the, and, and the, you know, this guy is a physical specimen, Stevenson. Yeah, um, I don't like it. Dynamic around the goal line. Let's just take him at plus seven fifty. I'll, I'll be damned if, if Bolden scores at thirty to one now. But let's right. go, Stevenson. 